today we're going to be doing a review of Riff Raff. Now this game is kind of like a um, really unique dexterity dexterity game where you're trying to place pieces on this like constantly moving ship that once you place something it starts swinging and it starts getting a little bit harder and harder. So it's really fun. Okay, so we're just gonna go um, straight into the review. This is a dexterity game, like he stated, that is just uh, phenomenal for uh, kids and um, you know adults trying to just uh, play and figure out how to balance uh, components on the ship. So what do you think about the overall rules? Um, I would give the rules a 5 out of 5. We had no trouble at all with the rules or anything. It was really simple to pick up, play, and learn. And it definitely is one of the more lightweight games, which is, which is really good for a lot of people. So I give the rules a 5 out of 5. Um, this is great and easy to uh, learn and play, uh, especially for the age range, which I think is A+. Plus. Um, so this... I would venture to say could probably be played at six or seven and then teach hand-eye coordination. Um, especially this, like of all games that we played, this is the most hand-eye coordination game that we've ever played. Um, it's a lot harder than the previous one from the same company, Hamster Roll. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the more advanced version uh, and a lot harder than that game. So. Five out of five in the rules. What did you think about the components? Um, I don't think I gave the rules a star rating. I'll actually give it a five out of five. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I do like the components. I would give them a um five out of five. However, it can be a little bit difficult to set up this thing if it's your first time playing the game. And like you like stated, it's a lot harder than our previous game, Hamster Roll, to actually place the components on the places. I would recommend um, playing Hamster Wall a few times and then kind of once you master that game, then you should venture on to this game. Because if you haven't played or like really mastered Hamster Wall yet, you'll probably have a pretty hard time placing some of the pieces in this game. But I really do like the components and the different shapes. So five out of five for me. Actually, I like to cover one thing. I do wish this piece, these, um, some of these pieces were easier to place, like this green one. Like we were only able to place this piece like, like one time maybe, and it seemed to be pretty hard to place it, especially if you have multiple of this same piece. It seemed to be really hard because as soon as you place it, it all falls off. Well, not only that, you're also limited to certain spots in the ship because they're uh, so wide in the weight and, and thickness. So it's just uh, pretty much uh, for that aspect. So for the components, I get a five by five, great components, really like the uh, wooden pieces, love the ship and how it rocks and everything, sways as you put in pieces, makes it very difficult and challenging to uh, win in the game. Uh, it's something definitely you have to master and get used to. So five out of five in the components. What did you think about the overall experience? Um, I would give the experience a, um, um, I like a 3.5 out of five because it was a little bit tricky to place the pieces on some of these, especially if you're if you're stuck with some of the tougher pieces because unlike um, Hamster Ball, you never really like, had too many pieces in this game. We noticed in this game, it's a lot easier to get like all the pieces. And like, if you have like, like, like most of the pieces, you're kind of doomed and it's really hard to do anything. And you kind of basically have to become like, like a key maker and try to like help someone at that point. Because since you're placing, it's like you're placing pieces on this ship, it's way easier for them to fall and you to get a lot more of them. And it's a little bit more unpredictable too, because this thing walks all the time. Unlike Hamster Wall, where it's not constantly moving, this thing seems to constantly be in motion. Like after placing all those pieces, it still has not stopped walking a little bit. So I would give the experience a four out of five. Uh, great experience. Uh, like he stated, Hamster Roll uh, would kind of favor a little bit more. Um, this ship, um, 
it has a tendency also um, when you set it up and everything, um, like the wood, it, 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 you have to balance it and it sways very easily. Once you have it where it's tilting, it's hard to pretty much man, uh, maneuver it back to where it's flat. Um, so also the uh, components are, some of the components are just extremely, if not impossible to get beyond like uh, the hard, higher tiers. And so you're pretty much, uh, a lot of them, you're gonna be using it at the bottom level um, in the actual ship uh, compartments. And so it's, it's kind of uh, hard, uh, but I'll cover it more to that uh, during the mechanics. So for the experience, 4 out of 5, uh, what did you think about the mechanics? Um, I'll give the mechanics of 4 out of 5. I really do like the mechanics, but I'll go more in detail into the um, pieces because some of them are easy. <laughs> if I were to rank how hard easy the pieces were to place, I would say this one's probably the easiest. Um, this one's a little bit harder to place, but still easy. This one's easy to place on these. And pretty easy to do flat. But all the rest of the pieces are really hard, if not impossible sometimes well, to place. This one's kind of easy. Yeah. But it still it's hard. Placing it on the higher tiers, it's really hard to place it. So. Yeah, that one's actually pretty easy. But these three, it's like when, when you get layered to the game and it keeps on rocking, these three can almost be impossible to place. Yeah. So and you and if and if you're like stuck with these three, you're kind of forced because you're you have to play something each turn. So you're pretty much guaranteed to get all these, which can be very tough. But I would but I also do like the cards how you kind of want to go first, so there's not more pieces on there, but you also want to get a lower number at the same time, because the higher up you are, the harder and harder it is to actually place the pieces. Mm -hmm. So, that's a, another thing you have to think about, and this game also can have lots of downtime, because you have to really focus when placing the pieces. Yeah, so I would give the mechanics a 4 out of 5. Um, the pieces uh, weren't an issue for me placing, uh it's more of the the boat kind of has a tendency to sway but once you have it swayed it's it stays that way also the uh, the way the the game works is you get a certain amount of cards uh, you're using each one of those cards each each round um once you use that card you cannot use it again so pretty much uh what most people use Either you start out using the more heavy items at the start or at the end. But once you uh, eliminate a lot of your cards, towards the end, it just becomes a lot harder. Um, unlike hamster roll, where you can use pretty much any piece you want at any time to win the game, this one you're kind of limited to uh, the card value to put the on the pieces on the boat. And so it's just... Uh, makes it a little bit more challenging but also makes it where it's just uh it makes it like really tough towards the end because you're at the end you're kind of limited to like one or two cards and so you're just you're not really choosing you're pretty much uh it's predetermined the the what you're gonna play in the end and so it's not a choice that you pretty much get it's a choice that the card ha that are left so for that aspect, I give a, the mechanics a 4 out of 5. Uh, what did you think about the replayability? Um, I would give the replayability like a, um, I would give the replayability a 4.5 out of 5. This game I actually think is more replayable than Hamster Roll because this game will take a lot more time to master. Oh yeah, it will. Like it will take so much time to actually master this game and to place these harder and harder to place pieces, you'll really need to master the physics of this game. This game would also kind of be a good game for like a classroom to teach people physics. Yeah. Because you really have to rely on physics in this game and like try to balance it out in this really wonky sip. So, and I completely failed there. Yeah. <laughs> but. He, he's yet to master the physics aspect of the game. <laughs> yeah, but. 
But I really think that this game does have lots of um, replay value with with all the different things. And you really have to think of what you're going to do because, as you can see, every single time I've been replaced in this formation, the boat has rocked a little bit more and more. So as you can see, later and later in the game, this thing can walk really far. I can imagine if it... I'm not sure. We have, we've yet to um, realize this. But you may sway so hard, or this thing may pop out. Maybe. Because we notice when it like sways really hard, it kind of goes out of a thing a little bit. Yeah. So I could definitely see that happening, and that could be very annoying. Mm -hmm. But I think that the replayability is high on this game. So I give the replayability uh, five out of five. High replayability. Um, yes, there's this. Like he stated, this will be so hard to master. Um, and so it would take many game sessions to pretty much uh, get to the point where you just know how it plays, where it plays it, uh, you know, where to start, like, you know, mid game, um, end game. And you have that progression because there's so many pieces that you're placing and your opponent's placing it in each of the, you know, areas. Um, but, you know, you have like one all the way to 10. And so, and it's pretty. De it's determined on the card value that you place. So high replayability. Uh, and I can totally see this being like a family favorite, especially with younger kids. So five out of five replayability. Um, what did you think about the overall total? Um, yeah, one thing I like to say is there definitely is more variety than um, hamster wall and uh, the shapes. Because and also the, the weight. Yeah, the weight. Because in hamster wall, it was like there was just like some basic shapes. Mm -hmm. This game actually has different shapes. Well, I think it's all supposed to be pirates because this is like a plank. This is a rat. This is a pirate captain. This is like a jug. This is like a barrel. This is a boat. And I don't treasure know. Chest. Treasure chest. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like pirate themes. But I would give the overall total a um, 4.5 out of 5, 8.8 out of 10. I still really like this game. But we're a little bit more in favor of Hamster Wall. A little bit more. We It's probably because we're not so great in this game. Yeah. If, well, if, you guys aren't. <laughs> if, you, if you mastered Hamster Wall, you would probably want to move on to something tougher. And this is like the next level of that. So I feel like Hamster Wall is like level one. Riff Rack is like level two. Yeah. I would like to see like a good C one day, maybe like a level three. Yeah, that would, it would probably have a lot of different uh, yeah. that would be tentacles more... of uh, yeah. elements to where yeah. you could pet stuff. That would probably be more for like really, really yeah. advanced games. In fact, that, that would be awesome. An octopus theme one. Oh. Where, where it's like not just the uh, wood pieces, but mm. it also angles different angles where you can yeah. pet stuff. So. Yeah, that would be really cool. Yeah, there's, there's lots of things that you can do to, like, ex like they could do to expand this game. Mm -hmm. And, like, you could just do countless of things to make this harder and harder and, like, keep you coming back for more. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I really like Hamster Wall and Riff Rack both. And I would really like to see maybe one day we will maybe master this game. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'll give it, like, a 4 out of 5, 8 out of 10. Uh, phenomenal game, uh, one of my favorite dexterity games. Uh, also, there's, uh, I would say it's also predetermined on who you're playing with because it's like if you're not playing with people that uh, are good at dexterity games, hint, hint. Amanda? <laughs> or you. <laughs> it kind of makes it difficult because you're kind of, the pieces are always falling, so it leaves all the areas pretty much open, but also. You're not, they're not balancing or trying to balance the uh, boat with you to try to pretty much get to the end game where you have most of the pieces on there. They're just trying to put it wherever. <laughs> and so it, the pieces are just going to fall. And so it's just really difficult when you're playing with someone that doesn't know spatial and weight distribution uh, very well. And so I can see this game going up as uh, they get better with more dexterity games um, and we you know come back to the game and 
play it more. So eight out of 10, uh, four out of five for now, um, but I can see this, this rating going up. Yeah, for me, 4.5 out of 5, 8.8 .8 out of 10. Um, if you master this game again, the rating could go up. So, yeah. I really would like to see a level 3 one day. Yeah. It was a, I will say, it was a big gap between this game and Hamster Roll. Because I think Hamster Roll came out in like 2001-ish. Mm -hmm. And this game came out in like 2016. Mm -hmm. So there definitely was a big gap. I don't know if we're going to see a, a level 3 but it would definitely be something really cool to see. Yeah. Okay, so if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Social media is down below in the description. We'll have a link of where to buy the game. And we'll see you in the next video.